Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your very first time here, my name is Dillion and on my space here I simplify topics around the web, around tech, around software engineering. So if this is content you would like to see more of, kindly subscribe. And in today's video, we'll be looking at React Ref and Forward Ref. We'll get to understand why React Ref can be helpful, when to use React Ref and then also when to use Forward Ref. So let's get started. So I have this simple React application built with Create React App and let me show you what it looks like. So when I start the development server, it basically has this audio element and I can play and I can pause. Now the thing with this audio element is I am using the default controls of the audio, which you can see here by when I specify the controls prop. So it's using the default controls, but when I want to specify custom controls for that audio, then I would need to create my own custom handlers for the different operations I would want to do on the audio. I have to create my default handlers and then also I would need to have access to the DOM elements for the audio such that I can call the play method, the pause method and several other methods that the element has. So when I remove this now, this is something I have built already. I'll explain the code in a second. Let's see what it looks like. So this is it here, I have my own play button and I have my own pause button. Now over here in the code, like I told you, we needed to have access to the audio elements. And when you want to have access to an element on the DOM, you use DOM methods like get element by ID, query selector, by class names. There are several, there's a lot of them. So here I'm using the documents that get element by ID. I have the ID here to be audio LM and I have this audio LM state here, which by default is null. I have a little TypeScript here. You can ignore the TypeScript annotations. And when I get the elements, I'm using use effects to ensure that the component has mounted before I'm trying to get the element by ID. And after getting the elements, I update my states of the audio elements and this is it here. Then I have this on toggle play pause um, method such that if the audio, when the method is called, and the audio LM states is not null or is not undefined, is true T. Then I check if is playing, which is another state for keeping track of the audio playing. If it is true, then I call the post method on the audio element and I set the is playing to false. Else I, I call the play method and I set the is playing to true. So that's basically how it works. And this is where refs come in. So over here, I'm using document.getElementById. I had to go through the extra process of having to create a use effect to ensure that that component has mounted. Of course, this is, this is just how you do it in, in plain JavaScript, but React offers a more effective approach or a more simpler approach, which is using refs. So by using refs, I don't need to uh, keep track of the audio L. I don't need to update that state. I don't need to have this use effect here and my audio, my toggle play pause would look something like this and this is the audio ref here. And then over here, I think I need to comment this too, and then over here I add the audio ref which I created up here, use ref which is an HTML media element. This is also TypeScript, you can ignore that and then null and then over here I have the audio ref variable assigned to the ref attributes. Now using this provided by React I have gained access to the audio element. This is basically creating a reference above here the audio reference and you are attaching that reference to this element over here. So now you can this will give you access to the DOM element and the DOM properties. So here it's going to have all of those, it's going to have the DOM elements in the current property of the audio ref. So on the current property, I check when you're trying to toggle play pause, if the current property has a truty value, which means it's um, the, the reference is actually attached to a component or to an element, then I can I here I just give it a different alias, I change the current to audio LM and then I call the pause method and the play method and let's check if our code still works. And yes, it still works. That's basically how it works. We create our ref here, our reference here and then we attach it to this audio element and then we can, using the current property, we can call the pause method, the play method and then every other method that the element will be exposing.
So that's how we do it with refs, and this is when to use ref. So instead of using the DOM method, instead of having to create a use effect to ensure that the component is mounted, having to manage extra state, you can just use the refs directly. So when exactly do we use forward refs? As we can see in this audio component here, this audio component has the direct access to the reference. It calls the play method, the pause method. It manages the controls on its own. But then what if we wanted to give this app component, which in this case is a parent component of the audio component. If we wanted to give this app component access to this reference so that the app component here could call the play method, the pause method, that's where we do a forward ref. So forward ref is basically a way of passing ref from parent component to a child component. So in this parent component here, we have the we create the ref using the use ref. I'm going to add my TypeScript. You don't need to worry about this for now. I'll just give it a default value of null. And we'll give this audio component, we'll pass the ref into this audio component. And then let's see how we use the forward ref. I'm passing the ref into the audio component and then over here, this way I use the ref. So I'm going to change this function component a little. And then this way I call the forward ref. It's a method and it's going to receive a callback function. And inside that callback function is going to pass two arguments. The first is props and the second is ref. And I'm going to move everything from here to here and don't need all of you and boom. So I also want to add some TypeScript here. So this is going to be the HTML media element and my props. So this way, I am sending the ref from this point here to this point here, and then I can remove this audio ref and I can call this audio ref. And I can move all of this to this place here. I can move the toggle play pause to this place here. I'll call this audio ref. And I'll call this the audio ref. For this audio ref here, I'm going to come to this ref here and I'm assigning it to this audio ref and I can move this is playing from this place to this place. Can get rid of all of this. And I can move these buttons from this place down to this place here. And for the SRC, okay, I need to destructure this. I'm going to get the SRC and export default audio. So as you can see now, the all of this, the parent component created the ref and the parent component passed the ref into this audio component. And then now this parent component can manage the controls. It has access to the ref. And let's say that I think there's something missing here. Okay, there's an extra bracket here. So now let's see if this still works. So here's our app and then when you play, and when you pause, you have that. There you have it. There are so many other advanced things you can do with refs. Refs don't always have to be DOM elements. You can assign, you can create refs for numbers, for objects, but here we have seen how to use it for DOM elements. So that's basically how you use ref, and that's how you create a forward ref. Just to reiterate, the forward ref here, you create your reference here, and then you pass it into the audio component here, which expects it by using the forward ref method for creating the function component. And then that's how it works. And if you found this video helpful, kindly like, kindly subscribe, and kindly share.